Okay, guys, chapter 29 of Amal Unbound. I walked into the kitchen with Nazreen Baji's empty lunch tray that afternoon. When I stepped through the double doors, Hamid was putting down balls of dough while Fatima and Nabila were setting the serving plates and bowls into the counter. I had a bit of flour left over, so I'm making us some fresh rotis, Hamid said when he saw me. He slapped a floured circle of dough onto the skillet and flipped it. Get the food quick while it's nice and warm. We'll clean up after. I hadn't had fresh rotis in so long. I quickly made myself a plate along with the other servants. I trailed behind Mutaj and sat down next to her. Is it true? Hamid asked me when he joined us. Did you really talk back to those officers? She did, Bilal said. I froze up as usual. No one blames you for being afraid around those monsters, Mutaz said. Not one bit. Were they the same police officers that came by last time? Gumbal asked between bites. No, Bilal said. These were different ones. It's a parade of them these days, Gulam remarked. Bilal shrugged and picked at his food. He didn't say anything. I was lucky I got to work for Nadrin Baji. I couldn't imagine having to cater to a person like Jawad Sahib. I cleaned up my dishes and put them away. When I stepped into the hallway, Bilal and Nabila followed behind. Thank you. Bilal stuffed his hands in his kameez. Thank you for speaking up. You really saved me. Oh, I said, that's okay, really. Well, Nabila and I were talking. I glanced at her and then at me. You know you like reading and were enjoying Jawad's library, weren't you? It was a mistake, I said stiffly. I shouldn't have done it, but what if you could read again? But what if you could read again, Nabila asked. I stared at her. Well... We were talking about it, and I know when he's here, when he's gone, and when he's coming back, Bilal said. So maybe if we were on the lookout, we could borrow books again. Why? I asked. Why would you help me? Because we owe you, Nabila said. It's our way to thank you. He wouldn't notice his books were missing, I said. Not if he forgot those books are even there. Come on, she said. Follow us. I trailed behind them down the hall to the library. Nabila walked over to one of the filing cabinets. She and Bilal pulled it forward to reveal a bookshelf wedged behind it. He jammed that new cabinet in there for a few months back and hasn't moved it since. He probably doesn't even remember that there are books behind it. I looked at Nabila. As tempting as the books were, how many times could I fall for her tricks? Amal, Nabila said. I know I haven't made it easy. I'm sorry, but you can trust us, really. You're one of us now. As Muntaz says, we have to look out for each other. I looked at her and then at the books. I slipped out a thin collection of poems and short stories. I ran my hand over the cover. I didn't expect to have this chance again, to be able to turn pages and learn new things and keep my mind alive. I could not say no. It was worth the risk to have books in my life again.